Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV. Um, a few episodes ago we built our relic weapon. And so here we have another one and... We start with a finished relic weapon. So... Um, as the relic weapon has a whole quest line of upgrades. Which we go a little bit into. You've done your part, so I, I do mine. Watch now and try not to bat your eyelids. Ain't every day you see you get to see a relic reborn. <laughs> These God given hands worked yet another miracle. Feast your eyes on Cortana. As it was in the days of yore. Yeah, and here we have a relic weapon for the Paladin, Cortana, and the, um, I forgot the shield's name, quick. Anyway, once you have your relic weapon, there's a furnace here, where you can, for free Tafnarian Mist, you can upgrade your relic weapon to a relic weapon Zenith. Ah, holy shield, okay. Or in the case of a paladin weapon, because you have a uh, main and uh, offhand items, they cost together three Tefnarian Mist. When we equip the relic weapon, Gerald has another quest for us. It's you, gods, I never thought I'd be glad to see you. Just the other day, this old bloke from some faraway land suddenly appeared. He's been bugging me ever since, asking about putting souls in relic or something. Not, none of it makes a whit of sense to me. Can't a man see how busy I am pounding kettles all bloody day? I got a time to be human and be elderly. What's more, you're the one with a relic, ain't that right? If there's anyone with the on block ought to be bothering, I reckon it's you. Run along and keep the old coat off my back. And that is exactly what we will do. Over there is Yalzan. Ah, the impropriety. In my land, the elderly are treated with deference and visitors received with honor. You must excuse me, adventurers. I have endured a trying sea voyage to meet with Eorzea's greatest weaponsmith, only to find that he is the greatest bore to have ever had I have ever had the displeasure of knowing. But what's this? Your weapon? Unless I'm gravely mistaken, it's a relic infused with Tafnarian mist. It is indeed. Marvelous. Marvelous. Uh, but where are my manners? Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Yalzan, and I hail from the near eastern city-state of Razatan. I'm an alchemist by trade. It's been my life's work to study the enhancement of arms through soul infusion. Verily, Tefnarian Mist is one of the fruits of my toils. Upon learning that this elixir had come to some prominence in Eorzea, I journeyed here with the intent of exploring new possibilities in my research. I want but for a subject to proceed. If you would be that subject, your weapon will become further enhanced. Will you agree to assist me, adventurer, and for your troubles come to possess a mightier relic? Yes, of course. A decision you will not regret, but without further ado, allow me to explain what my research entails. 
Now, I trust you are aware that the theory that ether permeates all things in our world. What you may not know, however, is that ether is found in greater concentration in Eorzea than elsewhere. When a weapon infused with a quasi soul, as your relic is used to, s and to slay a living being in this ether rich land, a peculiar phenomenon occurs. The ether released by the fallen creature resonates with your weapon and agglomerates into a crystal which I have dubbed Atma. It must be noted that this occurs only on rare occasions due to factors I have yet to identify. Now, as you may have already gathered, Atma is essentially the crystallized soul of a living being, and these crystals are the key to strengthening a weapon. According to my research, 12 unique pieces of Atma are required, meaning they must be acquired from 12 different foes. See the deed done, adventurer, and you'll hold in your hands such power as you have never known. By participating in Fates, while equipped with a Relic Weapon Zenith, you may obtain an Atma Crystal. The location of a Fates and the Atma Yielded are as follows. Central Shroud, Maiden, the Southern Fanalan, Scorpion, Apan Lanosia, uh, Water Bearer. So the Atma are resembling to the Zodiac signs. East Shroud, Goat. Eastern Fanalan, Bull, Middle Lanosia, Ram, Western Fanalan, Outer Lanosia, Lower Lanosia, North Shroud, Central Fanalan, and Western Lanosia. Great list as it was made here. And you can find, if you have to look it up again, in your completed quest journal under Up in Arms. So. That is what we now have to do for, to upgrade our relic weapon further. We have to equip the weapon, or a, a relic weapon zenith, doesn't matter which one, and do fades in these aforementioned areas until eventually an Atma drops. From experience I can say an Atma drops at about 20% chance after finishing a fade successfully. I heard it used to be far lower than that, but um, yeah, you need tw all 12 different Atma. Also mind, Atma are inventory items, they are not key items. So keep some room in your inventory for the Atma, not that they get lost because <laughs> your inventory is full. And just to show it off, our the Relic Weapon Zenith now glows. Which color it glows depends on the relic weapon. Okay, I found all the Atma, all 12. You can see them in my inventory here. Well, as it's common with uh, these 20% chances, as I said, and sometimes you get lucky and get them at the first fate you do in an area, and sometimes you farm for 40 minutes. Or sometimes you farm in an area where there is no Atma and you realize uh, that only much later. Anyway, uh, Yazan, help me with my Atma. With the power of Atma, I shall imbue your relic with such might as it has never known. Lend me the object you wish enhanced and I shall see the deed done. Cortana and Holy Shield. Ah, 12 unique varieties of Atma. You have done well, my dear adventurer. Pray leave the rest to me. I require but a moment. It is done. True to my theory, the souls housed within the Atma have merged with your blade and shield. Take them up once more, adventurer, and save on the newfound power that curses through them. Your relics and the weapon has been reborn through the power of Atma. If you wish to have another relic weapon Zenith enhanced, you may do so by repeating the process of obtaining 12 unique Atma and then presenting the object to Yalzan. And now I need to have the weapons equipped once more. It's a bit tedious between equipping and unequipping the item, but, um, well, okay. Well, 
It is just a color swap from the normal relic weapon and it lost the glow from Zenith. Also, the Atma weapon is not truly in any way stronger than the Zenith weapon. It has the same stats for now. Ah, my stout assistant. I trust you are enjoying your Atma infused relic? Now, while your newfound might may be indeed be impressive, what if I were to tell you that your weapon may grow even mightier still? My research leads me to believe that this is a distinct possibility. As before, if you would agree to be my subject, I promise that you will not be the worse for your part. What say you? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. I knew I could count on you, my friend. Listen then, to the fear we have recently formed. Legends tell that when the world lies upon the brink of destruction, brave souls who bear the light shall arise to banish the darkness. These heroes are known by myriad names, but in my way to Razatan, they are called the Zodiac Braves. The Zodiac Braves are said to wield arms of unparalleled might that shone with a radiance of a thousand stars. My ultimate objective, my dear adventurer, is no less than the recreation of these legendary arms. Tavnayan tradition holds that the Zodiac's brave gathered light to their weapons by vanquishing formidable foes. This might theory that the heroes were in fact absorbing souls. And now, through the use of Atma, your weapon has been transformed into something with a self-same ability, and it exists as a vessel for souls. At present, however, this vessel holds but a small fraction of its capacity. If your weapon is to realize its potential, you must have it drink deep of the souls of slain foes. Of course, not every soul is created, created equal, and so it follows that not all creatures will serve our purpose. Indeed, the Zodiac Braves themselves were very particular as to which foes they chose to vanquish. In the interest of efficiency, you would do well to seek out adversaries of like nature. For this you might refer to the Trials of the Braves, a collection of sacred texts that tell of a hero's deeds. The books are common enough in Razatan, but having recently formed my theory, I did not think to bring them with me. Alas, though, with trade furnishing between our lands, maybe there is a local merchant dealing in imported wares who has them in stock. Yeah, Ravenna. Only Ravenna. If it's anyone, then her. And that is who we will go to. Hello, Ravenna. Maybe you can help me? Huh? Tavnarian literature and he was who wielded dazzling weapons, and it's called the Trials of the Braves. Might be as I've got something that fits your description. Just. Just Sana, the one who deals with tombs and the likes. You'll find her in the North Gate of it all. Okay. She is over there. Trials of a brave, sir, yes. We happen to have the tomes, but why would anyone be interested in moldy old things like... Uh, um, what I meant to say was, they're extremely rare and we aren't like to find them anywhere else in Eorzea. Nine books comprise the set, and each alone is worth a small fortune, but I like you, adventurer, so I'm willing to offer you them at a discount. For the bargain price of 100 elegant tombstones of poetics, you can be the proud owner of a piece of history, a book of the sacred trials of the braves. Make no mistake, anywhere else and you'll easily pay twice that. When you're keen to make the exchange, just let me know. Yeah, you can't find them anywhere else. Yeah, a 
set of uh, trials of a brace for a relic weapon comprised of nine books. For, for the paladin, seven for the weapon, two for the shield. Each book can be bought from her, however, you can only possess one book. You must complete all objectives in a book before you can obtain another. Or you can just let her throw your book away for some reason. By the way, uh, when you do, she tells you, yeah, these were to be destroyed anyway, so good riddance. This says the same thing again. Yeah, and the books are on the key items. That is also good to know. And once you're finished, your relic weapon becomes a relic weapon animus. You can have a tell it to you again. But let's buy a book and get screwed over and look at one. Um, I think we start with a shield because those are only two books. It is the book of your heart's desire. I have no doubt it will provide endless hours of entertainment. Have there ever been 100 elegant tombstones better spent? I think not. Now, book. In this book, you have four categories. Enemies, which are ten types of mobs you have to farm, like you had uh, of a challenge lock. You have three dungeons. One is a lower level and two are higher level dungeons. You have three fates, usually all above level 30. And you have three levers, all above level 40. And you do repeat this nine times. This is probably the longest of all the steps. Which is why I just skip you through it and um, there's a specialty here for the Paladin because we have two items and the shield only costs, has uh, two books. You can usually finish your shield into the next step long before you do your weapon. And then it gets this white sheen. Okay, and we get for our first finished Atma weapon, for our first finished Animus weapon, an achievement. And there is our shield. Okay, and finally finished with a weapon. Yes, the relic fairly pulses with a power of souls. To have successfully brought it to this state, yours is an uncommon perseverance, adventurer. You have done your part, and now I shall do mine. This will take but a moment. Yeah, but my task took a bit longer than a moment. It is done. Ah, the souls within landed a truly magnificent gleam. Take up your relic anew, my friend, and bask in the light of its majesty. Your relic weapon Atma has been reborn through the power of souls. Ah oh yeah, you must be equipped with an Animus weapon. Okay. That is a bit annoying. Um, to upgrade the weapon you cannot be equipped with it, but to continue the quest you have to be equipped with it. So you are permanently on and off equipping the item. Yeah, 
Greetings, my dear assistant. I trust your enhanced relic is serving you well. Yet know that we are but halfway to recreating the mighty arm described in the legend of the Zodiac Braves. Aye, your weapon can house power even greater than now, and I believe that this power can be attained through the use of materia. As is my wont, I have dabbled in these peculiar stones and acquired a rudimentary knowledge of their workings. With my limited grasp on the subject matter, I have gleaned that, already being laden with soul energy, your relic cannot be enhanced via conventional materia melding. An alternate method is required, and for this we shall need to consult the experts. If you desire to wield a mightier weapon, you would do well to seek Mutamix, the goblin credited with bringing the secrets of materia to Eorzea. He and the students are said to be camped at a place called the Bonfire in Central Fanalan, though you doubtlessly already knew this. It was a clear, just in case you don't hear this uh, text. Okay, let's go to the Bonfire. Shh. What brings up in there to tentering of Mutamix bubbly pots? I have this materia problem. A blender's fighty tool already filled with airy self wishes it to gain power of materia. A blender's difficult desire. Such knowledge do not exist. Yet. Muta makes his new underlearner name of Hubertin. Hubertin seeks to outdo our power of materia, but is having brain blocks muchly. If Uplander gives lent hand to Huberton, brain box may be broken, yes? Okay, you might help me, Huberton. <sighs> Why won't it work? Why won't you bond, damn you? For forgive me, my outburst adventurer. I have hit a proverbial wall in my research and has driven me nigh insane. Maybe we can help each other. What? You've been working with a man from Razatan, and this Hunnish alchemist has had you infusing your relic with soul energy, and now you seek to further enhance it with materia? Indeed. Hossa! The builder be praised for guiding your steps to me! I'm begging your pardon, adventurer. The prospect of a breakthrough so excited me, I quite took leave of my propriety. My name is Hubertin, and I have but recently joined the carriers of the cauldron. I seek to overcome the limits of advanced materia melding, also known as a secret joining skill. As you may already be aware, an object can safely host only a limited number of materia, but by extracting the soul energy held within the stones and converting it into light, we may circumvent this constraint. Or so my theory goes. While I have succeeded in transferring this light energy into a transitory medium, all attempts to then have it bond with equipment have ended in dismal failure. I had all but given up hope when you arrived. Your soul-infused relic, I believe, is an ideal vessel for this light energy, and with his revolutionary techniques possessed by Mother Yalzan, I am confident that our efforts will bear fruit. Aye, our efforts, I say, for we share the self-same goal. I trust you shan't object to a collaboration. And so, without further ado, I bid you fetch me enchanted ink. Not any enchanted ink, mind you, but one that boasts superior ethereal conductivity. The ink is central to our endeavor, and I have recently depleted my stores. For a blessing, it would seem that it can be had at Revenant's toll from a merchant named Ravenna. Um, why are you frowning? Did I say something inappropriate? If so, please accept my apologies. My mother always said that I lacked tact, but to return to the matter at hand, for all purposes, I must have no less than three bottles of ink. Pour return here when you have procured the requisite amount. Very well. Okay, 
to Ravenna. Well, if it ain't my best customer, what's your fancy today, then? Ink with superior inferior connectivity, do you say? Ha! <laughs> ain't nothing ever simple with you, huh? Well, just so happens the shipment arrived from Tefnan just three days ago. Oh yeah, and I can fix you up with the stuff. We've got plenty in stock, so long as you've got the elegant tombstone of Braddock to exchange for them. Oh, in case you're wondering, you won't find it anywhere else in Eorzea. I make a point of being the sole supplier for whatever it is I sell. We're just good businesses, see? Okay, Oriana. Under special arms is that. Superior enchanted ink for 25 stones each we need three in total okay and what back to her button yes her button we have your bottles of superior enchanting here you go yes this shall serve our purposes perfectly with this ink, I shall draw, for, draw a canima pattern of power upon parchment to create a sphere scroll, a medium for storing material derived light energy. This, my friend, is a key to raising your relic to the next level of might. We want for but the catalyst by which the power of material may be converted into light and infused into the scroll, a rare stone known as Alexandrite. Being a variety of dark matter, Alexandrite possesses light-altering properties. When placed beneath a, light, beneath a light source, it bursts into a dazzling display of color. Owing to its singular beauty, Alexandrite was highly prized by ancient civilizations, and so now every natural deposit has been exhausted. However, the stone is known to emerge among hidden treasures, we just need to know where to look. It may behoove us to consult dealers of artifacts from bygone eras. Like Ravenna. Gods, I cannot recall when I last felt so invigorated. Many more things remain to be done, but any sort of progress is better than none. Give me but a moment to gather my thoughts and I shall resume my explanation. Sphere scrolls now available. That is probably the most annoying part. Infusion attempts can fail. Mysterious maps can be obtained from Oriana at Revenant's Hall in exchange for other tombstones. Completing a certain quest will also earn your map. Alexandra can also be, ab be obtained, albeit at a low probability, by participating in fates while having the animal's weapon equipped. Okay, but let's begin the Starlight Subbright mission. Using the superior enchanted ink you bring, I shall prepare a square scroll bearing Akanima patterns for enchanting your relic. Your task will then be to acquire a suitable variety of material, along with a piece of Alexandrite by which to convert and infuse their spiritual energy. When this square scroll is fully infused, the time will be ripe for its power to be bonded with your relic. The overseeing of this final step, step I shall leave to Master Yalzan. Now as you go about infusing materia, you may well undergo a change of heart. If you wish to have any infusion removed, bring the scroll in question to me and I will see the deed done. Lastly, pray relay to Master Yalzan all that you have learned from me. This wealth of knowledge, I believe, will be instrumental to our success. Square scrolls may be obtained from where they change for blah, blah, blah. Similar, if you wish to undo a fusion process, you may do so by speaking with Hubertain as well. Okay, off to Yalzan then.
Welcome back, my friend. What by your triumphant expression, I take it you have found a way to enhance your relic with material. Converting this spiritual energy into light for collective transference. A truly inspired idea. But I'm not one to count my daughters before they hatch. Based on my experience, I'm quite confident that this method shan't disappoint. Now, depending on the varieties of materia used, I expect that your weapon's properties may undergo change. Precisely in what manner I cannot say until the infusion process is complete. Go forth and refuse the spear scroll as per young Hubertin's instruction. When you have accomplished this task, bring the scroll to me, and I shall see to bonding its light energy to with your relic. Likewise, if you desire to know how your weapon will evolve, present it to me along with the scroll, and I shall divine for you an the answer. Once you have fully infused a square scroll with materia, present it to Yalzan to and to um, upgrade your weapon. Please note that the process will replace the weapon's attributes with those that were infused in the square scroll. The attributes strength, dexterity, vitality, intelligence, and mind will be raised to a, a value befitting gear of item level 110. Attributes that remain will be replaced with ones infused into the square scroll. In the case of Fibrous Animals and Omnilex Animals, base direct hit rate will not be replaced. Now, and they mentioned a quest to get mysterious maps that begins here from Edwin <laughs> nothing worth a damn just st stupid bloody rock again ain't good for half a pint of pish by god spuddocks if ain't the aspiring treasure hunter from branch lake what brings you here friend wait don't tell me you was drawn to a a sweet smell of treasure, ain't that right? Well then, treat your nostrils to fish. A mysterious map would point the way to an ancient cage of untold worth. Now I know what you're thinking. Only a fool would reveal such lucrative information to others. And I ain't no fool, but like you, adventurer, I want you to have this map. The very last one. Problem is, me ma collects them. Why? I don't remember. But don't give them to her, she'll uh, flock me bloody. You don't want me to get flocked bloody, your dear? Of course not. You're a good sir. That's plain to see. You want to help Eldwin, and you can do that by running the map over to Ma over at Reven Revenant's Toll. Brangwin's her name. Who knows? When she sees you, she might be she's taking a liking to you and. Uh, let you have a map. Don't quote me on that, though. Never got the speed your way, adventurer. And while we're at it, uh, they can be mine too. To lots of treasures and grog. Yeah. Earthwind was the guy we met during the tutorial quest for treasure hunting. Who was basically our teacher, even if he obviously is not very good at treasure hunting. Though he would tell you differently. Anyway. There's Brangwin, his mother. Why, hello there, young one. What can old Brangwin do for you? Your son asked me to give you this bottled map. Oh my, a mysterious map! My drunken lord of a son has you running errands, I see. For that I apologize. Rest assured he will be suitably disciplined for his indiscretion. Why do I collect these maps, you ask? Well, it just so happens they remove kitchen stains like a charm. Something to do with a special ink they bear, I believe. If you want your kitchen to be spotless like mine, I wouldn't be averse to parting with a map or three. My son keeps my stores constantly resplenished, you see? In exchange, I ask that you bring me a, 
let's say, articles found upon adventurers who uh, misadventured. The gods know we have no further need of uh, worldly possessions, so you need not feel guilty. Where are these articles to, like to be found? Why, they have a deadliest creature's prowl, of course. Adventurers are drawn to them like moths to a flame, are they not? By your questioning look, I take it you're wondering what interest I have in such salvaged items. You have secrets that you would sooner take to the grave, do you not? Let me keep mine, young one, and I will let you keep yours. Okay, a repeatable quest is now available from Brangbin. Completing the quest will earn you a mysterious map. This is a daily quest. Morbid motivation. So you're keen on my little proposition? Wonderful! I look forward to rummaging through the personal effects of your slain peers. As I mentioned earlier, these are like to turn up wherever the deadliest creatures prowl. I promise to have your mysterious map waiting for you upon your return. Then you too can luxuriate in a spotless kitchen. Yes, she is using the mysterious treasure maps as cleaning racks. Anyway, uh, there's also the other way to get a map. map. From Oriana here, mysterious map exchange. Looking to get your hands on some Alexandrite, are you? I have a map right here which should lead you to a buried cage. For 75 elegant tombstones of Pertic, it's yours. Yes, steal it for your peace of mind. You may decipher it at your leisure. So, this is a treasure map. It works like any other treasure map. You. Un uh, uncork it, look where it's at, and dig it up. But you can always only have one treasure map, so I have to clean that one first. And I would already have done so here. So let's dig up our Alexandrite. Mm. Where is it? Down there. Open my treasure chest. Activate the trap. Open the chest for real and get five Alexandrite. And let's take a look at the Alexandrite before that, uh, but I need materia. Namely, low materia. Uh, Vastly overpriced battle material one here. Because we start with a rank one material and I, the higher ones come later as you increase the stats higher and higher and higher. Okay, but and for every item you invest, for every material you invest, you need an Alexandrite. 75 Alexandrite in total. Here split from our weapon and our shield. That's why there's just 53. Okay, I skip you past Albert. I, I am finished here. Oh, well, my art. I should. Yeah, bitte, please for Katana. Magnificent. The scarce world shines as the stars of the heavens. When your relic receives its, of its power, it will be enhanced like so. Overview of stats. As you will it, I shall finish the task that you and her burden have started, which will take but a moment. O oh, mighty relic of Eld, receive of the scroll the memories of toil and triumph, and with thy newfound light illuminate this adventurous path. We have our new relic weapon. 
It's done. Take up your weapon anew, my friend, and bask in its radiance. The radiance of a newborn star. Your relic weapon animus has been reborn through the power of materia. If you wish to have another relic animus enhanced, you may do so by repeating the process of infusing a square skull with materia. A star is born. And now to do the same thing with a shield as well, but I do it off screen and we continue another time with the uh, last steps of the relic weapon. So until next time, I am Ace and don't get lost.